What's up guys, welcome to Void of Disc Gaming, your channel for fresh Arena of Valor content. And I just wanted to play a quick match before I had to work and it ended up in one of the best Lubu matches I have ever played. Um, some of you might know that I'm in Diamond right now, so that means that I have a pick and a ban phase. And by accident I locked in Lubu. I wanted to uh, play a support slash tank hero because I had some quests open in the codex. But I kind of misclicked. And then we had Xanis who wanted to play as a jungle hero, which is fine by me. That's one of the best positions where you can actually play Xanis. Like, I don't think that there's a position at all that I want to play him. So he has to go in the jungle. And this Xanis didn't want to go in the jungle. So it was Lubu jungle. And this is my final decision. You are going to see Lubu right now. Um, I'm going to showcase you my build because I think I haven't... I haven't shown Lubu in the jungle before. He was actually quite good. Like that, I can take that um, before you guys watch the video um, a little bit forward. So things are going to be pretty exciting. And I had some really good plays. Maybe I should play more often in the morning. There's an outplay, or not really an outplay, but this is kind of like a tactical play where I was really proud of myself. So see for yourself, you're going to see the build first. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, a subscription would be awesome. So hit the notification bell and you will always know when I upload a new video. And follow me on Twitch as well as Instagram. That would be a really nice thing of you too so enjoy today's video all right so i've played around with lubu's basic armory build and the arcana and the enchantments quite a bit in the past and my latest stage was that i wanted to play him more sort of a tank hero with a little bit more of damage items uh, tank arcana and sustainability enchantments this build is going to be different. So as you can see, we have only one real damage item. That's the rank breaker. Rest of the build is going to be a little bit more tweaked around some tanks items. Tanks items. So we've got the Leviathan. We've got the Gilded Greaves. Super important because it will jump in all the time. So you need the crowd control reduction um, effects from the Gilded Greaves. You've got the rank breaker. Um, you've got the frost cape, which is actually quite nice because it's passive. It means that you're going to slow down enemies. You've got the Aegis for some additional durability and you've got the Blade of Eternity that you're not going to see in the video at all. That's like the tank build. Arcana wise I was, I was kind of going back and forth. I had mixed feelings about this but I decided in the end to go with my attack damage build. That means you've got 10 times onslaught for the armor pierce and the normal attack increase. I've got Assassinate for the normal attacks and the movement speed increase because you want to land in hard. You play him as an assassin. You want to land in hard. Just four to five attacks. Things need to be killed. So we have no room for attack speed increase. And on the last but not least, we've got Skewer with the normal attack enhancement. And the armor piece is pretty important on that because you want to shred through armor if the enemy goes with that. That's where the rank breaker comes in as well. Enchantment wise, we're going with a full build of Lockheim. It's pretty insane. We are using Shadow Blade because you will dash once, twice, three times. And then you are up against the enemy. So it stacks up three times. It's perfectly built for Lubu. And with the Deadly Claw, we are increasing our attack damage even further. And then we're using Devil's Awakening because it is increasing the damage reduction, which is really nice. It resets on kills and assists. And the ultimate reduces cooldowns of your other abilities, which means you're going to jump in, activate ultimate, throw in your two activate one again and that's your main source of damage and on the second line of the enchantment tree we are going with a really nice mark of the frost and i'm gonna use that in a very cool way um preventing to be killed this time and i've got the gunslinger for the movement speed and ability power stuff increasing things pretty good build i was really impressed by the performance so check out the gameplay Alright guys, so I was sparing you the whole pick and ban phase. As you can see, we are up against Lindis, Florentino, Toro, who was really good this time. Um, they've got Violet, which is kind of annoying because she can roll out every single time I encounter her. And we have Natalia, who is a damage-dealing beast on the enemy team. 
But then we've got some really nice utility with Crixie with a knockup and Alice is doing a really good job in this case because she will use all of her abilities to prevent the enemies from getting to us and there is one scene in the video where you can see how well that works. So I'm starting off with my blue buff as you can see we've got the spirit sentinel down on the bottom lane so I wanted to go in here first. And I was already imagining that Xanis might just have a really hard time against Florentino. And please check out Xanis' life in the lower corner of the map. And you will see that is this is kind of the prediction that I was making. Hard time of playing against him. If you're playing Xanis against um, Florentino, I would advise you to play quite safe, encounter him once with your abilities, go in with one, activate two, and then you're good to go. And afterwards, you will need to dash out again. This is kind of like a really strange scene. We're going back and forth here. Lindis tries to do something on the, on the red buff. In the end, she loses not only the red buff because she will not contest it, but then she will also lose really precious time because that's just kind of like if you're going with that go all in and don't do something like th th everything else so i was trying to i was trying to go in by using my stuff here and getting in with um the frostbite to secure this the kill and now i activated my ult I was waiting for Florentino to make things happen and then I just went in straight for the double kill and it worked pretty nicely. Natalia is not able to retaliate um, and that went m more well than I thought, or that went better than I thought initially um, as I was approaching the enemy. So that was kind of like a really nice kickstart. I was not only getting two kills but I was also killing their jungler which is always something that you should favor if that's possible. And now I need to just get out of the Wi-Fi because yeah, I just had the feeling that I was lagging back and forth a little bit, especially at the Spirit Sentinel where I had some free spare time to try. And that just means that now I'm back on my mobile and everything should work on quite smoothly. And that just gives us the time to look at this really precious skin. Like, I love Lu Bu skin and I need to play him even more in the future. He's a really good hero at the moment. Um, I mean, we're here on Diamond, so the players are not the super noobs. But on the other hand, of course, they're not like the super pros. But in the end, I thought I had a really good stand with Luba. So here we go again. Ult is activated. I am checking that I'm going for some squishy targets here, getting the getting an assist um, on Lindus. And here that's what I that's what I meant. And preventing the damage. That's really nice. So we do not only get one kill here, but we are assisting on the Lindus, which is actually quite nice. And now you can see how strong the ultimate is. I just activated the ultimate to get me back into the game. Lindus just pressed her um, I'm going to be revived because I have this stopwatch thing. So she's back in the game. And as you can see, Alice has not really that much of a struggle defending the lines against her. So Alice is always a really good pick. I need to back off here because she just detected me with one of her kind of detection mines. And right now I'm using my old as some kind of utility um, I just wanted to go back and, and now I need to go out like I just wanted to go back into the fight so I was using my ult up here and as you can see Toro is really strong like I was surprised and unfortunately I wasn't able to kill Natalia here and I was killed because my health wasn't too high but it doesn't matter because we're still doing good for one that's nothing that I want to whine about and unfortunately Unfortunately, our Valheim has a hard time dealing against Violet. She's just so mobile. I mean, Valheim has a, has a good chance of getting her because he's got this uh, stun ability. So you can, every single time she uses her role, you can just stun her immediately in place and then just put some damage in her face. But of course, you need some good positioning and timing and that's not always the case. 
especially if the game is kind of speedy. Um, you can't secure that this is going to happen. So, <sighs> I wasn't too sure about the next move. So I was, I was, I knew that this would be a little bit risky because we had Violet up there. We've got Toro up there. We have only Alice defending the tower. So <sighs> I made it work and it worked out fine in the end, but it was risky and I would not always do that. So again, now I've got Flicker out, which is always a good sign. And now I'm using my ultimate to get some attack speed increase and to get through to Toro. And as you can see, it takes a while, but it is worth the effort. Now that tank is gone. And if not for Lindis, if Lindis would have not approached the scene, I would have tower dived without the blink of an eye which just have gone straight for violet under tower because like on the one hand the only thing that she could have done was like the only two things that she could have done was be to abandon the tower roll out and get back to safety sparing her life or she would have defended the tower and then we would have gotten the kill someone might have died but we would have gotten the tower and a kill on the ad carry which would be the the double worth so I'm having some hard time pressing with Alice here because Violet is just defending the tower so well, like she has the abilities. And now my team is stacked up down in the jungle. I don't know what they're doing. Like this is just such a crappy bullshit play. I don't even know. Like it it just, I had the impression that Xanus was about to go in and then the whole team had to get him out. So... While doing that, not even Valheim died, but Xanis died as well. So I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I was just checking that everyone was really, really low on the enemy team. So I decided to snack me some nice Natalia here. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Not really having, not really having complications. And I'm landing my, I'm landing my stuff here quite well. So, hmm. That's risky business, I know it, but now my team approaches and I thought that I would have been able to dodge out, but I think I think one of Lindis' spells has just hit me. Like it looked, it looked that I would have been able to make it out alive and as someone mentions later on in the game, we've got one single problem and that is we don't have a real tank and I'm not the person to engage. Like I should be second wave. But then we don't have a tank, so of course that role is split between Xanus and me. All the other characters can't really do it. Xanus wants to jump in from the side lane or from one of the brushes into the back line as well. So we've got basically our heroes, if the abilities do feel a little bit different, we basically do have the same kind of job on the team. So this was one one of the like most stupidest stuff that I've seen in this game. That was such a waste of life. I don't know what he was thinking. I'm 7-2. That means I'm fed. Um, I'm building tanky. And tanky items always outrule damage items. That is, that's a normal calculation. And my team just lets themselves get completely wrecked up in the dual lane. I don't know what was going on. Yeah, we have no tank, I know, but that doesn't mean that you need to fight in the thick of things. And I just decided that I'm going for the tower and pushing solo lane up by myself. As I saw that everyone was pretty much um, occupied doing something on the, the mid lane. I just thought like, okay, I've killed Florentino once. He wants to be killed again. So I don't know. I was just going for it again. Mm -hmm. So here we go, here comes the enemy team, everyone is just going into position. I jumped in the wrong direction here, I wanted to go for Natalia. That was so bad, like I wanted to go in for the Natalia, and now look at that, that was the scene that I mentioned on earlier. <laughs> that was so good, like now I have Natalia, and the thing is, Violet is dead. Uh, Violet is close to being dead. That means she can't really do something against us. And now we put ourselves back on track. 
And now look at that. Like now Florentino approaches. I've got ult ready, which means I'm going in with my ult. We're killing Toro first because he is just super annoying. And now we're going in for the Violet kill. So in the blink of an eye, we killed both of these. Natalia is about to go back and she was killed beforehand by me, which means that single action just gave us three kills and presumably a tower. Here we go. Here comes the tower. I need to be super careful right now because Natalia just has the damage. And now I am dead. Yeah, that was... There was calculated risk, but it was too risky. I should have moved back a little bit further, as I said. Natalia has the damage, even if she is not fed right now. She just has the damage, and that's going to be, um, of course, a little bit unhelpful. And now, look at Zan. It's like, don't do something like that. He's not participating in a fight. There's no need to push that wave. And he's just pushing that wave or getting that wave right now. Beforehand, he has been... Hanging around in the jungle doing things and no one really knows what that is. And now he's back on farming in the jungle instead of helping his team. That just shows his motivation. Like otherwise I would have said, okay, that dude was just getting something in the jungle without um, without uh, too much of a problem. He was going for the waves. But then that wasn't the case. I can jump over things, that's pretty nice, pretty neat. And now we've got another Lindis. Lindis wasn't too good in this game, but that doesn't matter because we want to win and therefore we're going all in with our stuff. As you can see, there is quite some damage and now we're having um, some hard time here. They're doing Abyssal Dragon, I didn't see that. Like, I wasn't paying attention to those two guys but now they've got a whistle dragon which means that we do get some gold and some experience points um i don't have the full stack unfortunately and right now i'm doing my stuff again i'm waiting for toro to be exposed and now i can go back into the lines getting another kill on lindis and now we're fighting toro and that means we have just gone for three of them and now the only thing that is holding us back from winning the game is Violet. Basically Violet. Florentino is not really that much of a problem these days. I can fight him easily in a one-on-one -on -one because I've got just so many more kills and gold than he does. And here comes Violet Onslaught. So that's the next tower. And yes. Enemy team is kind of down. Florentino is the only one alive. Now Lindus is getting back to life. Game! How nice was that? Like, that was actually quite fun. So my verdict is, if you've got if you've got some skill and you only need as much skill as I do, so you don't really need that much of skill, um, you can play Lubu in the jungle without a problem. Get this nice skin. 33% damage taken. 28% tank so that means i was the tank for the team like most of the time and yeah that was actually quite fun like i enjoyed playing lubu so nothing to say about that 139 i think that's quite impressive for my statistics uh you've seen the build here's the stuff 76.9 percent participation that's always a really nice figure just i just screenshotted that for instagram and yeah that's that thanks for watching guys stay tuned